Good morning. Hi everyone. Let's begin. What is sampling and sampling methods? So let's begin in the session sampling. So sampling, why it is needed and what is the relevance of sampling in research? Actually, when we have large size of population, so it's not possible we can take in, in taking into consideration each and every person. So sampling is the selection of a subset of the population of interest in a research study. In the vast majority of the research endeavors, the participation of an entire population of interest is not possible. So a smaller group is relied upon the data collection. So sampling in market action research is of two types, probability sampling and non-probability sampling. So one by one, we are going to cover up probability sampling and non-probability sampling. As we know, names itself, it's defining. What do you mean by probability sampling and non-probability sampling? Probability me sampling means itself, it says each and every unit of that population have equal chance to get select. But non-probability sampling means each and every population do not have chance of equal selection. So here is probability sampling. Probability sampling is a sampling technique where the researcher selects a few criteria and choose members of a population randomly. So probability sampling, one by one, we will discuss all types of probability sampling also. But before this, let me finish this. Probability sampling method utilizes some form of random selection. In this method, all the eligible individuals have a chance of selecting the sample from the whole sample space. This method is more time consuming and expensive than the non-probability sampling method. The benefit of using probability sampling is that it guarantees the sample that should be representative of the population. But in non-probability sampling, we cannot say that would be representative of the whole population. So types of probability sampling, basically these four standard types we are going to study today. Simple random sampling, systematic, stratified and cluster sampling. So one by one we can cover up. First is simple random sampling. Simple random sampling, it is also we can call it chance sampling or probability sampling. Where each and every item in the population has an equal chance of inclusion in the sample and each one of the possible samples in case of finite universe has the same probability of being selected. Like for example, if suppose we want to select sample of 300 items from a universe of 15,000 items, then we can put the names or numbers of all the 15,000 items on slip of paper and conduct a lot. And using this random number table is also another method to collect random sample. This is known as simple random sample. But when we come to the systematic sampling, in some instances, the most practical way of sampling is to select every 15th name on a list. So every 10th house on one side of a street and so on. Like for example, if I'm teaching in a class and uh, there is in my class, let's say 60 students, I want to select sample. So I can use the systematic sampling also. Let's say I have selected fourth roll number. And after that, after every, I will select, I would jump every 10th number, then I would select that student as sample. So in, in, in that way, we have developed an, a systematic method to select sample. Sampling of this type is known as systematic sampling. An element of randomness is usually introduced into this kind of sampling by using random numbers to pick up the unit with which to start. The procedure is useful when sampling frame is available in the form of a list. In such a design, the selection process starts by picking some random points in the list and then every nth item or nth element is selected until the desired number is secured. So I hope systematic sampling is clear. Then we come to the stratified sampling. In the population from which a sample is to be drawn does not constitute a homogeneous group, then stratified sampling technique is applied so as to obtain a representative sample. For example, in my class, some students are very intelligent. Those have scored 
more than 80 percent marks or above and uh, some students are in between 60 percent to 80 percent marks some are below 60 percent marks so i would divide all these students in three categories so this is known as strata and after this out of these stratas i would like to select 10 10 sample from each strata so through random sampling i would select from each strata means some student 10 students from 80 or and more than 80 percent marks some 10 students i would select from 60 to 80 percent mark and some students means 10 students i'm going to select from below 60 percent so in this technique the population is stratified into a number of non-overlapping subpopulations or strata and sample items are selected from each stratum if the item selected from each stratum is based on simple random sampling the entire procedure First stratification and then simple random sampling is known as stratified random sampling. And now the last one is cluster sampling. This is also one of the type of probability sampling. So cluster sampling means, let's say I have taken this example. Some departmental store wishes to sample its credit card holders. It is issued, let's say, its cards to 15,000 customers. So sample size is to be capped, say, 450. So first of all, what we have, we will do for cluster sampling, this list of 15,000 card holders could be formed into 100 clusters of 150 card holders each. And then after that, three clusters might then be selected for the sample. And that is known as cluster sampling. Next, we come to the non-probability sampling. Non-probability sampling, as I said earlier also, any sampling method, their probability of selection can cannot be accurately determined. The selection of the elements based on assumptions regarding population of interest. Number one is, these are the types of non-probability sampling. Number one, convenience sampling, quota sampling, purposive sampling, and snowball sampling. So one by one, we are going to discuss each type of sampling. Convenience sampling means we can call it that is at your convenience level. Suppose I, where I am located, I know nearby area, some people. So as for my convenience, I can, I will share my questionnaire with them and I will collect data as for my convenience. So convenience sampling method is sample are selected from the population directly because they are conveniently available for the researcher. The samples are easy to select and the researcher did not choose the sample that outlines the entire population. So sample would not represent views of other people that might be possible, present or another are. And this type of sampling is most useful in pilot study. For example, this is the interview conducted early in the morning on a particular day. Like people, he or she could interview limited to those in shopping center at the time on that day. Let's we come to the second type is quota sampling. So quota sampling, when we had used stratified sampling, the cost of taking random sample from individual strata is often so expensive. So interviewer are simply given quota to be filled from different strata. So the actual selection of the items for sample being left to the interviewer's judgment. So this is called quota sampling. So size of the quota for each stratum is generally proportional to the size of the stratum in the population. So quota sampling is thus an important form of non-probability sampling and quota samples generally happen to be judgment sample rather than random sample because that depends on the, in the person's judgment. And then we come to the purposive sampling. Purposive sampling means that is, or we can call it this kind of sampling is judgmental sampling also. That means that depends on researchers' knowledge for population and purpose of the study. Subjects selected based on some characteristics. For example, the researcher is interested in learning more about students at the top of their class. They will be purposively selected because they meet a certain characteristics. So this is the purpose behind this. And last one is a snowball sampling. A snowball sampling, we are calling a chain referral sampling technique. That means first one you can select yourself and after that, this person will give reference to another person. So it's it, it would be like a chain. And then after that, after getting this reference, you can contact to another person. This person will give you another person and this kind of chain would be developed and you are going to collect this kind of sample. 
So I hope this video would be helpful to you. This is all about your sampling. Thank you. Keep watching.